The first of these is a stress analysis problem where we're looking at stresses in the ice sheet of Europa, which is one of the Galilean moons surrounding Jupiter. And this is a, a very interesting moon because we believe that there is a water uh, ocean underneath the surface here. It's got an ice surface and there are tidal forces between uh, the, the moon of Europa and Jupiter and the formula for the, the radial and the Z component of tidal forces are given by uh, these formula here and of course they'll vary with angle as we're looking at um, different points along the surface. Okay. Now there are different types of models for the ice sheet. This is the thin ice model. Uh, the thick ice model has the ice uh, almost in, in sort of a plastic phase extending much closer to the surface of, of the moon, um, the hard surface. And we believe there may be other type of features, for example, the, the geothermal vent systems that are supporting tube worms and so forth on Earth, perhaps located on the, the sea floor. And also that in a later simulation we'll look at the induction of currents in, in this particular ocean. So it's the tidal forces between Europa and Jupiter that are giving rise to the energy source that would form um, the, the thermal energy required to have uh, a liquid water ocean and uh, perhaps event, event features like this. So with the mass of Jupiter, roughly 10 to the 27 kilograms, the mass of Europa, there's the small m here, which is roughly 10 to the 22 kilograms. The center to center separation between Jupiter and Europa, uh, about 10 to the 6 kilometers. The radius of Europa, uh, 1.5, um, 1565 kilometers. With the ice thickness in the thin ice model is 20 kilometers. And the Young's modulus of ice is 6 gigapascal. Okay. So let's look at the, the quick field model. And I'll remove the previous simulation. We can have multiple simulations open at the same time, but I don't want to get too confused. So let's open Europa stress. Okay. So this is the geometry. Uh, Notice I've only meshed the ice sheet. We are not interested in the stress distribution in the, in the moon or its ocean. So we can just model the ice sheet here, which saves uh, a lot of computation, a lot of nodes. And if I look at the stress properties, Europa properties, uh, the problem type, stress analysis, and it's axisymmetric, of course. Okay. The block labels, there's only one. We're just modeling the ice. So this is the block here. Um, and it has uh, a Young's modulus of uh, 6 gigapascal, Poisson ratio 0.3, with a shear modulus of 2.2 .2 newtons per square meter. Now we have to assign some boundary conditions here. And I'll zone in slightly. So this is the, um, we'll look at this region here. This is the lower surface. Lower surface, uh, pressure of about uh, a million newtons per square meter. The upper surface is we're applying our boundary conditions and these parameters are determined uh, from the formulas in the, on the previous slide, okay, in a space vacuum. Now we also have, uh, we have to have a boundary condition somewhere in our model um, on the displacement here and I'm choosing zero radial displacement at this boundary at this that is on the z-axis, so of course there's not going to be any z, uh, any radial displacement of this boundary. 
Okay. Now let's look back here. This is the boundary of zero DZ. Okay. So there's no Z uh, displacement of this this boundary here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is uh, solve the problem. We can resolve it here. Also, this problem could have been made simpler by simply modeling a half of it. So it's really not necessary to model the entire um, hemisphere. I could equally well just model, uh, because this boundary condition here, you can see that there's symmetry about the center plane. So I, I only need to model half of this. Okay. And so what the color map is the von Mises stress distribution. And also we have um, the deformed boundary, which is exaggerated slightly in order to see it. So I can, if we want to make this a little more scalable, um, this gives us our displacement field and our von Mises stress distribution. And I can zoom in to see. We can see that along the equatorial region we have a greater uh, stress distribution. And I'm going to make a contour plot along the surface of the moon. Okay, so this gives us an idea of the stress distribution. Here. So this is the, uh, the von Mises stress along this region here. We can look at some other stress components here um, as well.